What's going on everybody? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Um, we were just finishing up work today and we were prepping for a sled trip. It's currently negative 23 outside. Um, we're with in, no snow on the ground. With no all. snow on the ground. So we decided we were packing up, kind of prepping our gear, and figured we'd run over our gear bags with you and just show you what we're running for the 23 season. This isn't meant to be like a, a description type of video running through the specs. It's more or less just showing what we have, what we think of it, um, just an unbiased review because we paid for it. So run through those and uh, yeah. kind of show you what works for us, what might work for you. For those with glasses, I might be, be able to be a good um, kind of user for you, kind of test subject to see, kind of see what I found works for me and what might work for you guys. The majority of what we use is FXR. You can see FXR bag, jackets. Um, that's just kind of the brand that we found works for us. There's a little bit of back and forth here and there, but for the most part, that's what we run. Um, overall, we've been happy with it, but we'll get in and start uh, showing what we actually have. So this is the bag that I run. Um, this is just that FXR bag. I forget the model of it. I got it back in about 2017, 2018, but I'm actually thrilled with the bag. Um, no broken zippers, no problems at all. It always works and it holds everything that I need it to. I obviously keep the jacket outside of it, um, but everything else is stored right inside the bag. It's grab and go. Starting out, I've got cold weather gloves. These are the FXR Torque gloves. I just got these last winter. So these have an inner glove, so you can kind of run it in three different ways. Just very small glove, just a somewhat warmer glove, well, quite a bit warmer, <laughs> or, or both of them together. Um, I've only used these two or three times now. I kind of wish they were a little bit better. Um, there's kind of a limited amount of dexterity to them. I like a lot of dexterity. I like a lot of feel of the brake lever, um, the throttle, all that. They're warm, not as warm as I really want them to be. Now, here's the gloves that I run probably 99% of the time. FXR Helium Short Cuffs. Um, these gloves are awesome. They're actually way warmer than I thought they would be. Um, tons of dexterity. They do have a Velcro enclosure. And I actually just leave them fully closed all the time. Use the loop, go right in. And they're a small glove, but they're way warmer than I really thought they'd be. Um, yeah, you typically like more of the slip-on style glove anyways. Yeah, I hate Velcro. Velcro. That tearing yeah. sound is awful. And it's very annoying to constantly try to find the same exact closure. Yep. So. so I just leave it like that. Um, while we're on this glove, I run a mirror on the left hand. Um, I hate when they're mounted to the sled. They're never in the right spot. thing that's great about this, go like that, and I can see every stupid little thing behind me. Um, that's me. We're going to go through the neck area. Um, I run this. It's a really goofy looking bib thing. It just slips right over your neck. Covers in this area. What's nice is if there's any gaps in the zipper of your jacket, it doesn't go all the way up. It just completely blocks the wind there. Just adds a little extra layer of warmth and you don't even notice that it's there. Um, then if it's really cold, I run a neck gaiter just to put a separate seal between this and the balaclava that I wear. Now the balaclava that I wear, I keep in this big pocket here. This is a climb arctic one. Um, again, kind of the whole back and forth thing. This balaclava has been awesome. Um, it's warm. The snout here is very, um, it's not restrictive inside the helmet. It doesn't press against your face. But it's nice and rigid, so it keeps its shape. It's not yeah. always doesn't, falling on your face, your nose. It doesn't flop all around. Um, it's got like a neoprene, uh, what's it called? Neoprene material. Ah, surfing, surf suit. Dry suit? Dry suit, wet suit. Yeah, that like, thing. Wet suit. Um, We're not surfers, if you no. couldn't tell. <laughs> we live on the seacoast. I know. So, this has got like a wet suit material. Um, thing that's great about it, if it gets wet, it doesn't just get and freeze and the next thing you know you have a, a hard like foamy material stuck around your neck. It always stays pliable like that. Top is nice and thin so it doesn't feel bulky in your helmet. Um, it's just overall a really nice well sealing balaclava. Um, 
You also notice that a few of these things we both have. It's something that we found both works for both of us. That's one of them. This is one of them. It was one of those, I didn't even try any other balaclavas before just purchasing this one. I just went straight for it. It was one of those things that saw it, saw how it worked, made sense to me, just decided to pony up and buy one. Another thing we have that's shared that's actually at home right now because I just washed them is my FXR base layers. They're 20% wool. Um, what I like is you don't overheat in them, but if you sweat, it wicks the sweat. And it really does a good job of keeping you dry, warm, but not being overbearing. And, and not restrictive at all. No, not at all. Next up is my jacket. Um, this is about a year old. Uh, it's a FXR Renegade, it's four way stretch. Um, this jacket's awesome. It has the fast flotation in it. At first I was a little bit worried about that because I thought it would make it bulky. Um, it doesn't. What I actually can do with it because of the fast, there's a little bit extra insulation. I run no liner in it. Uh, we go snowmobiling up in Arista County, Maine. It's consistently low teens, single digits or colder. Um, if it's negative five or below, I got to put the liner in. But I mean, anything above that, no liner and it's warm as can be. Um, I'm happy with it. It is not restrictive it's light it feels like i'm actually not even wearing a jacket it's it's yeah. very comfortable underneath the jacket i run this liat chest protector um, it's motocross style and what i like about it is it gives you that extra little bit of protection um, i don't like tech vests they're too bulky they add just too much overall space inside your jacket you feel like they're, they're heavy they're very heavy they're bulky um, nothing against them but that's just not my preference i'm also really used to these growing up racing motocross forever and ever. Um, it's, they're just comfortable. They don't get in the way. Um, they're easy on, easy off, and it just adds that little extra bit of protection. A lot of people say in the cold, on the trails, don't run a motocross style helmet. We're here to say do it. Um, this is what I run. Again, this needs to be updated. Um, this is from 2017, uh, FXR Blade. Um, it's a great helmet though. This one has the winter kit in it. It's got the plugs there to block the wind. Um, what I like about it is you get the flexibility to wear goggles, to have whether you want heated goggles, clear goggles, um, mirrored, smoked, whatever you want. You can run whatever goggles you want. And I personally love the feel of goggles. There's nothing quite like it. Um, when I had a, when I was looking at these helmets, my big concern was the peak catching wind. Um, it doesn't happen. This blade has big air gaps in the peak. Um, I've gone excess of 110 miles an hour, never felt a thing. Standing up, you never feel like your head's being pulled back. It always just cuts right through the wind, no problems. There is a little bit of air leakage while you're riding, um, never in your eyes, but around your mouth. The Klein Balaclava, it's a great balaclava. You get a little bit of wind, but not bad. I like it. If you run warm, um, it kind of cools you down. It keeps you getting fresh air. So you don't feel like you have to always pull over to the side of the trail yeah. and take your full face off or say, man, I wish I had a modular because you kind of always have that open air feeling. Here's my goggle bag. Um, this is a Oakley goggle bag I just picked up from online a couple weeks ago. It has one trip on it and it seems durable enough. Um, kind of just did the trick for what I needed it to. Now, I've got four pairs of goggles in here. Two of them are old ones, don't really get used. Uh, two of them are new and get used really all the time. Starting out, I got a spare clear lens. I've got a set of older FXR goggles. I don't remember the name of them. Um, with these, first ride out, what happened, and I was absolutely tilted about it, was the foam kind of ripped in the top there. Then, as you're riding, you get snow falling down into your face. And that was my first ever ride with a motocross style helmet. So I was like, oh boy, what am I in for? Um, luckily, as is tradition, that time I already had another set of goggles. Same exact thing. These have probably 15,000-ish miles on them. Um, that didn't happen with these. For whatever reason, did on these, didn't on these. So these are still in the rotation every now and again. Um, this one... It's kind of like an emergency set of goggles. Now the two everyday goggles that I wear are the new FXR Pilots. Um, 
These are by far the best snow goggles that I've ever worn. This is my clear set, gray. Um, the outriggers make it a really even pull on your face. The eye port is really nice and wide. Um, it fits in the blade perfect. Um, there really is, I mean, no complaints with these. And yeah, I've got- You've been running those for a while now and it seems like you've always had good luck running yep. them. This is my second year with the pilots, I think. Second or third year with the pilots. And, and they're really um, great goggles. So I've got the clear ones. Then I got the gold ones, um, black and gold, gold mirror. I find myself actually running clear more than the mirror. Um, if it's a really nice, bright, sunny day, these are awesome. But if it's just overcast, cloudy, uh, I actually prefer the clear. No glasses, they fit great. Um, with glasses, that's Yeah, it. they don't really quite work. All right, so next up, we're gonna show the pants. Um, these are FXR Mission X pants. I know for a fact, again, these are probably four years old. Um, I know for a fact they're not four-way stretch. I don't remember if they're two-way. Either way, they're very comfortable, but not incredible in the stretch department, like that jacket. That jacket's awesome. These don't really stretch quite that well, but um, they fit great and they're comfortable and they really don't restrict movement too much. You can be pretty active on the sled and, and really do okay. Um, the only complaint that I have with these is in the four to five years that I've had them, there's been a little bit of sewing that's come apart underneath the zipper. Right about there, it started to come apart. It hasn't grown, it's been like that for about two years now, but definitely for next year, I gotta, gotta get a new set of pants and I'll probably just end up going with the, the Renegade version, which is whatever four-way stretch. Uh, probably not fast for those, because that would be too thick, but. Anyways, I've got tree trunks for legs. They're pretty big. Yeah. And <laughs> those things are huge. And those fit me fine. Um, no problems at all with uh, base layer, then sweatpants, then those. They fit no problems. Um, again, other than that little bit of sewing that's kind of come apart, these have been rock solid pants. The zippers never uh, fray, never come apart, never bind up. Um, they never go off the track like my old lunchbox did in school when I was like six. Um, they got plenty of room around the boot too, which is important. They do, yeah. If they go right over the boot, you're able to zip them all the way down. Yeah, and it's easy. You can adjust how tight they fit around the boot. So lastly, I've got my boots. Um, they. What's awesome about this FXR bag is right on the end, it's got its own boot pocket. Um, a lot of boot pockets aren't big enough. And, and this one is, it holds the boots just fine. There is vent holes in it, so if your boots are wet or stinky, um, they do vent, which is really nice. Um, these are bright orange for some reason. Um, these are the FXR Elevation Light Dual Zone BOA. So they've got this BOA on the side that tightens the lower area right there. Then in the front, it tightens up this upper part. What's nice is if you like to run the bottom of your foot a little bit looser, but you don't want your, your foot and leg to move inside the boot, you can leave this one loose, ratchet this one down tight. I like both of them really, really tight so that like my, my leg is like, you know, suffocating because it's so tight. Um, I just like feeling that, that secure feeling. Um, these boots do have great support. Um, they have enough ankle movement. You can move, you can walk across a parking lot. But if you're hitting any big jumps, bumps, um, anything off trail, it really, uh, they really do support you pretty well. The other thing that's nice is these BOA laces, um, over time they can have some abrasion and the cable literally frays until it gets down to nothing. That happened with my dad's. Um, so for one trip, he had to use uh, wire stake ons to splice them back together just to get through the trip. Um, when I saw him doing that, I knew I didn't want that to happen for me. So I did a little bit of research on these boots and with them, if you put in, I think your serial number or whatever job number these boots have, you can get a set of boa laces for free in the mail. So I keep that with me in my bag. Um, that way, if these laces ever go, you can see this one's starting to a little bit. It's not bad but it's starting to get there. 
So if one night we get back to the cabin and, and they're frayed almost all the way, I can put in another set right before we go ride the next day. Um, it's just kind of a safety net. And it's nice that, uh, that they'll send them to you for free so you don't have to worry about buying them after you already bought the boots. Switching gears to my stuff, um, I really have only been sledding for about a year or so, if that it sounds about right. And um, But this is just kind of stuff that I've accumulated over that short period of time. Uh, stuff that I've tried out and um, yeah, I'll jump right into it. So starting off with the gear bag, uh, this is actually a Rocky Mountain uh, ATV and motorcycle gear bag. It's their own gear bag. Uh, I just picked it up a few days ago. but. I've been absolutely blown away. First impressions are just incredible. Zippers are super durable. The material itself is extremely thick. It actually kind of surprised me with how premium feeling it was for not a lot of money. Yeah, what is it, 120 bucks? 120 bucks, yeah. I know that you said you were interested in this actually for your moto gear this summer. Yeah, so for moto, I had a really janky setup of just using a plastic tote. Um, in a trailer, that worked great because you just have two plastic totes stacked, you know, soft gear, hard gear. Strap it down in the trailer. Um, I'm not using a trailer right now, just throwing it in the back of a pickup. The tote isn't working so good. So I'm looking at this gear bag. I was kind of looking at a couple other ones that are like four times the money of this. Um, if you know gear bags, you know what that is. And I couldn't justify spending that on just a gear bag. So I was thinking about this uh, Rocky Mountain one. And when Tim said he was going to get it for sledding, I was stoked because then I don't have to be the one to spend money on it if it isn't any good. <laughs> um, it seems to be pretty good, though. Yeah. I'm happy with it. I'll probably buy one. And what's nice is that it goes to show that this can be tailored towards moto stuff or winter sports stuff, and it works great for both. Yeah. It's not an awkward size bag either. It's, it's taller, which is kind of nice. You can fit more stuff in there height-wise, but it's not long either. It seems like it should hold really anything you need. But what's nice, it's still on wheels, it's got a grab handle, so it's very easy to move it around. Um, I don't know if you mentioned this with your gear bag, but it's the same exact way. It's got the wheels, it's got the hard handle, and it's one of those easy to just wheel around wherever you need it. These are the base layers that Alex was talking about earlier. They are the FXR 20% Merino wool. They're, um, I had that backwards, that's the one. But they're just super quality they're not too thick not restrictive but they just work they keep you dry they keep you warm enough and um especially if you like to ride actively on the sled then it it's nice it doesn't make you overheat with the boring stuff out of the way we'll move down to the pants these are the arctiva lat 48 i believe um these pants i hate them <laughs> i have to have a friend help me get the pant legs over my boots every morning and these zipped are, and zipped they're terrible it's degrading it makes me feel terrible it makes me feel less of a human this is something i'm going to upgrade next season absolutely no questions asked another piece of protective equipment that we wear is like you saw with alex is a chest protector it's pretty much the same thing as his just the updated version it's a liat 4.5 they're super slim but it allows you to still remain active on the sled and it just provides that extra kind of comfort uh peace of mind in your head that you won't get a stick through the chest hopefully hopefully that's that's the key keyword this is his old jacket that he let me wear which i appreciate a lot he's wore it had no problems with it i've been wearing it for that a year now and have absolutely no complaints about it the only slight issue with it is it's at the bottom right yep. yeah right down here it's beginning to tear but really it hasn't grown past that it still keeps me nice and warm while we're riding and it's one of those it's got plenty of vent vent holes tons of pockets and it's really great for exactly what we need no complaints from this one with helmets they had a full face helmet that was it was a hjc 
that I was that I was able to run for the first trip, kind of get my feeling of if I actually liked it or not. Didn't work great. It oh. fogged instantly. I had to have the visor up. I think it was the second day. Alex was like, "Hey, try out," because I already had a pair of goggles. Because I was one of those. It was one of those. I saw it at the grass drags, and I was like, "I'll I'll get them just in case." He said, "Try out my motocross style helmet." If you like it, we can try to find a shop and pick you up something. So that HJC lasted for a day. One day. One day. And, well, two days because I wore it because I let you ride the motocross. Yeah. Style. So I appreciate that. So that second day on our trip, we picked up this one. This is the FXR Torque. I th believe it's the team edition, but I'm not sure. It is overall a pretty solid helmet. It was the only style that they had in stock at the store. And I said, you know what? I'll take it, I'll try it. I'd never fogged once wearing the motocross style while I was riding in his blade. And I decided it, it'll make my time in riding a lot more enjoyable if I just suck it up and buy it. So with that, I did find throughout riding that my glasses would fog occasionally if I was standing on a sled. Whenever I was standing for a short period of time, they would instantly fog. If I were to sit back down behind this windscreen, went, went away. So I decided... No, that didn't happen with my blade, right? No, it never happened with your blade. Yeah. So that's where we move in to the new helmet. My favorite part about this helmet that I'm sad to see go is I'd look over here at Tim and he'd have his all black helmet, his all black goggles, all black lens, and he would look like a locked character in a video game. You just look at him and there's nothing there. Insert picture. That's where we move into this one. So this is the FXR Blade 2.0. So this is just an updated version of Alex's helmet and I haven't ridden in this one yet, so I'll have to give you my honest feedback and review on it once we get back from our first trip. But like Alex said, it's got these massive air vents here. So the hope is that there will be no sort of helmet lift or anything like that at speed. And overall, I got this on a closeout. I couldn't complain with the price, even though literally a week later they lowered it another $20, but that's fine. And overall, the only thing that I'm not a huge fan of is the fact that it has the D shackles here. And my other helmet had the quick release with the ratcheting system. And that was just super nice because it was super quick on and off. But obviously this is a secure way to have the helmet. That brings me to the goggles and gloves. So I have that just in an FXR goggle and glove bag, evidently. And this thing is great. It's kind of on the larger side for goggles and gloves, but I've actually found that it holds exactly what I need. So opening it up, this is how I have it set up. So right here I have my full gauntlet style gloves. These are the FXR Fuels, and they're the updated for 21, I believe, where it has this little pocket so you can put in a hand warmer if your hands get cold and a little chilly. I have no issues with that because I run ridiculously hot. It sucks being fat. You're good at it. Thank you. Appreciate that. This year at the Grass Drags, I picked up these FXR Attacks. I tried them on, they seemed decent enough, and decided to run with them and try them out. These are new for this season for me, and I'm excited to try them out actually on the trail. These are the goggles that I'm running. These are the Climb Edge goggles. They are incredible. They have an awesome field of view. They are have an extremely quick and easy lens change. It's got a little lever over here that you just flip up and then the magnetic lens just swings out. And you're able to quickly change to a clear lens, which I have in this little container here. And it's very easy to on trail, quickly change from a dark smoke to a clear. How's that goggle change working out for you? Better than yours. Not really. <laughs> right here. I just have a spare goggle bag, just in case. Actually, I don't know why this is in here. And I just have my ball cloth in here as well, because it just kind of keeps everything contained and organized. 
but this is the same balaclava that Alex has. It's a climb Arctic and it's just overall a solid balaclava. balaclava. Wow, I can't believe I clowned on that one. Yeah. Last but certainly least, we have the boots. What? I thought your pants were released. Yeah, those things stink. No, those stink. Come on, dog. Hey, at least these ones have soles. These are the FXR Helium Single Boa. So these are kind of similar to Alex's, but instead of having the two boas, one on the side and one on the uh, tongue, I guess, it just has one. So it tightens down evenly as you um, turn it. I can't lie, these things are so worth the money. They are so incredibly comfortable. I've thought about wearing them to bed. They are that comfortable. Weird. They're not real, that's not really weird. They just, they grip really well. They've got enough flexibility where it's not difficult to walk in them, but they are just so comfortable inside. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is so plush, so soft, and I just love these things so much. Another awesome backstory behind the boots. So that same day when Tim wore the full, the, the dome, right? The HJC dome, that was no bueno. Picking up this one. Picking up that. He also got new boots. The reason he needed new boots was because the old boots that he was wearing, <laughs> he noticed all of a sudden his, his leg was slipping and he had no traction. So doesn't think anything of it. We end up going back inside the hotel in our room. He starts getting his gear off. And he's like, oh, well, that might be why I was slipping. And he found the whole sole from his old boots completely fell off. It was a race slick on there. Granted, they were your dad's old boots from 05, probably. Early 2000s, yeah. yeah. And never been worn. So the no. glue just disintegrated. <laughs> it got one ride and the sole said, see you later. This was just our overall gear overview, kind of prepping for our trip. Again, it's way too cold to be outside, way too little snow to go snowmobiling here. So we're just kind of prepping for our trip in a couple of days. Um, we're excited to take you along with it. Um, we're gonna have a good time. While we're there, we'll go over the sleds we have, everything, uh, kind of a small little review about them. Yeah, it's something new for us, but we're definitely excited to get into it. And I think it'll be, it'll be good for us, pal. Exciting, I hope. Yeah. Something to do, right? But thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate you guys clicking on this video. Um, like, subscribe, share if, with if, your friends. If you have any questions about any of the gear, uh, feel free to shoot us a message on Instagram, Facebook, down in the comment section, anything. Um, again, we are very opinionated about gear, and for whatever reason, we're passionate about it. So it's feel, fun. It is fun. Um, we probably won't do another whole sled gear one um but if we get new stuff we'll say we got this then do a quick little impression on it but yeah definitely check us out on instagram the link will be in the description below um but again like you said if you have any questions please don't hesitate to leave a question in the comment section on any of our other platforms but thank you guys again for watching and see you on the next one, Have a good one. see you